Welcome everybody and sorry for running a few minutes late. My name is Mike Nimzo and I'm here with my colleague Jolene and we're excited to walk you through the October 2015 trends and we're going to start with, uh, first we'll start with the New York City Department Store visual trends uh, and then we've got another presentation uh, walking through a little bit more uh, details. So let me, so the way this works for folks that may not have attended a webinar previously uh, is we'll walk you through uh, each of these short presentations and it should go about 30 minutes and uh, that should be it. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Do you agree, Jolene? That sounds about right. That sounds completely accurate. All right. So, Jolene, first up, and hopefully um, everybody that's logged in, uh, on your screen you should see the New York City Department Store visual trends. And the first store is, department store, is Macy's. Uh, Macy's, Herald Square, um, yet likes to utilize a lot of uh, use of fluorescent lights. We talked about this last month being a trend. It's uh, continually a trend through the fall. I think the use of fluorescent lighting is uh, really smart because it's industrial. Um, it's versatile more than anything. You can uh, dress it up. You can dress it down. Um, you can make all different kinds of geometrical patterns out of it. Uh, depending on what you're trying to show. So Macy's does this really nice, whether it's in a sort of starburst effect or this is a little more um, almost Tetris-y. Um, but what this window is uh, essentially sort of um, honoring the brand new millennial floor. Uh, it's called One Below. Uh, One Below just opened about two weeks ago, so they just had their grand opening. It's beautiful. It is 53,000 square feet. And it was, uh, it's part of their four-year, $400 million renovation plan for the flagship store. So this is a very uh, small and integral part of a, uh, a larger mass that's going to be taking, uh, taking over for the next four years. Um, one below basically sounds, the millennial floor sounds like exactly what you would imagine a millennial floor uh, to have. Anything from um, popular junior brands like Vera Bradley, Bar 3, Maison Jules, uh, BCBG Generation, which is their sort of younger, um, more 20-something brand, XOXO, Jessica Simpson Shoes, American Rag. So it's Macy's alternative to the fast fashion of uh, New York City, right? So uh, yes. stores like H&M and Forever 21, you can get the same thing, if not better quality here at One Below. And, and you've been there, right? I, I, I was there about two weekends ago uh, checking out this millennial floor with my family. And I must say it's done very well. And what struck me is obviously it was focused for millennials, of course. And when I think about, okay, so what differentiates this floor from all of the others, it was definitely the ability to socialize. So they have... Um, these blow dry bars, they've got makeup bars, they even had electronics uh, stop and shop where you could go and get some of the latest electronic gear. So they literally have everything a millennial could possibly want for apparel, for beauty, for electronics, all on one floor, and it's done in a very obviously modern way. It's brand new, but I think it's done in, in a very thoughtful way and quite compelling. And so there was a lot of, I wouldn't say lounge spaces, probably not the right term I would use, but there were definitely a lot of areas where you could stop and either engage with the staff that was there. For example, they had uh, Levi jeans. And I think Levi's probably has this everywhere, but here it was exceptionally um, a bit of a large space where you could go and have your jeans tattooed, so to speak, embroidered, embroidered right. with a laser design, uh, a design that was lasered directly onto your jeans. And so that to me kind of lent itself to be very fun, engaging for millennials. And even where customers could go and try on the outfits was a lot of seating, like you said, a lot of charging ports. And it just was very inviting as a place to uh, want to hang out and spend a little bit more time versus just going into a change of room, trying to come in and out as quickly as you can. So we've got a few pictures up here uh, on the millennial floor. It takes up pretty much three quarters of the basement level floor at Macy's. And it will be interesting to see how that does. But 
definitely for those of you who may uh, be coming to Manhattan, it's worth checking out. And I think we've got some of some more uh, pictures posted on our Instagram. And you can always email us if you want to understand a little bit more what this millennial floor looks like. Uh, we've got lots of pictures available. Yeah, I think where they uh, sort of hit the nail on the head is um, what you said. Uh, I think what millennials love mo more than anything uh, is interaction. Yes. And it offers a digital age uh, generation exactly that. They literally have a selfie wall where you can post a selfie that you've taken and hashtag Macy's Love, and it links right up to their technology. So now you have this photograph that can be uh, tweeted, it can be Instagrammed, it can be Snapchatted, they have 3D printable jewelry, everything is so interactive and it really creates a one-on-one -on -one kind of memorable experience. It's interesting to see if this floor drives the type of sales and engagement, if it can draw the millennial consumer the way that they intended to do and I think that's the big question mark. It was well done, I went on a, a Saturday morning and it was pretty lively, there are already quite a few people there. so. Only time will tell, but I definitely feel like they have done what one would expect for a millennial floor at, at one of the world's most premier department stores. Agreed. Next is Lord & Taylor. Uh, Lord & Taylor is always interesting because they're always right on trend with whatever is happening. Um, to me, Lord & Taylor is like the litmus test. If you see it in their windows, it's pretty much going to be at everybody else's. Um, and they do it in a very sort of basic format that's really easy, it's appealing, it's easy to look at more than anything else. You understand it, you don't have to think about it, right? Um, this, in this uh, instance, it is uh, the basic fall trend of the 1970s. So that has been everywhere this season. We've seen it in so many collections from the past uh, fashion weeks in Milan, in London, here in New York, in Paris. Um, bohemian chic 1970s revival, you know, um, belled sleeves, flared jeans, fringe, wide leg pants, floppy hats, peasant dresses, billowy tops, and you can see it illustrated here with the Nanette Lepore and the Anna Sui, right? We have some more, um, some Mongolian fur, which has been really popular this season too. It's a little more earthy, a little less clean, right? A little more sort of down and dirty. Um, and the use of the uh, mosaic tiling in the background, very psychedelic and sort of 70s and retro. And those nice kind of, um, when I think of the 70s, I always think of like mustard, yellow, hunter green, browns, right? And very sort of, uh, yes. lots of squares, lots of geometric shapes. And I will say, it's the 70s is a decade that is continuously drawn upon in my belief for inspiration and um, for both fashion design and, and even from a visual perspective. And so we're seeing a lot of brands going back to vintage looks, whether it's just design generally speaking or celebrating their heritage more generally with their um, heritage specific items that may go back the decades and of course uh, we've just seen a tremendous amount of interest in our archives collection uh, as a result of a lot of brands and designers wanting to continuously look to the past for future ideas and inspiration. Yeah, absolutely. And fashion, if anything, is cyclical, right? So, uh, you know, this was popular in the 70s, and now it's the, you know, 2015, so it's coming back. You know, the next trend could be 40s or Victorian. We always sort of see everything uh, make its way back. Um, and Lord, this is perfectly it it is. And, and for those of you who are on who may not know, but Lord & Taylor has a very unique studio set up for their window displays along Fifth Avenue they have a basement where they have their studio and each window um, has essentially a hoist system such that the uh, floor for the window can be lowered into the basement the windows can be prepared and once they're ready for unveiling the windows are then hoisted up to the ground street level and made available for the world to see and we're able to get exclusive access to the Lord & Taylor basement uh, for our fashion window walking tour, uh, um, depending on the tour, and it's just uh, really a sight to behold. And so you can see they've just done some really great work with those mosaics, that tile um, portrait that's in these two examples. 
Yeah, I think my favorite, just going back to that, the, the hydraulic lift system that they use is so uniquely special to not only this brand, but New York City. There's nowhere else uh, in New York, or I would venture to say the United States, that uses this Correct. kind of technology. And the original motor from 1914, when they, the store opened, is what they use. So it's it's sturdy, it's you know time honored, and really sort of special. And Mike and it, Angelus and his team works you know in house, which is amazing. And it really allows them to do what a lot of other brands just simply cannot do, which is one of the reasons why we always showcase Lord and Taylor, obviously, they deserve it with what we believe to be very interesting work, but just given that ability to really create and build in the basement area gives them an advantage that a lot of other retailers along Fifth Avenue simply just don't have. It's very difficult, obviously, to um, have windows open to Fifth Avenue and, and put a studio behind it to really create these fantastic displays. Great. Next up is Bergdorf Goodman. Jolene, what do you have? Uh, Bergdorf Goodman, I'm not going to lie, I'm a little partial. I always, mm -hmm. always love Bergdorf Goodman's windows. I think they are spectacular. They always bring the wow factor. There's something so theatrical and romantic about them and these are literally theatrical because they are a uh, collaboration with the film Crimson Peak. Now David Hoey and his team, I call them the, the window magicians, they're so wonderful at what they do, but he's collaborated with a, a designer named Douglas Little to create, this is the biggest film installation that Bergdorf Goodman has ever done. And if you've never seen the Bergdorf holiday windows, this to me is a perfect like little appetizer to the entree of what we're gonna be getting from them in the next couple of months. Um, if you're not familiar with the film Crimson Peak, it is the new horror movie by uh, Spanish director Guillermo del Toro, who directed Pan's Labyrinth and Hellboy. He's uh, sort of lauded as a visionary director. His art direction is really beautiful. He tells a story through his sets, through his costumes, constantly sort of reinventing the wheel in a very romantic way. Um, I haven't seen the film yet, but I've seen so much footage and I do, do this tour every day that I feel like I feel very associated yeah, with it. And it's gothic, it's romantic, and they actually took pieces from the film set in the UK uh, and incorporated them into the actual window space. So it's really, really stunning and special. And I haven't seen the integration or showcasing of a motion picture film really before in New York City, I'm sure it's been done, maybe it's been done, been done elsewhere, but to the degree that Bergdorf has done it, it's absolutely phenomenal. And I don't know if our viewers can see, but obviously there is a um, uh, adhesive, all right, and it's highlighting Crimson Peak. It's a decal, yeah. A decal, thank you. The actual uh, window. Thank you so much. And as you can see here, it's saying in theaters October, whichever date that it was, 16. 16th. And so really interesting the way a preeminent department store is leveraging their amazing windows and this frontage that they have along some of the most expensive um, part of Fifth Avenue in partnership with Crimson Peak. So, and done, this is a most compelling way. Yeah, this these is are absolutely easily, phenomenal. These are easily the most elaborate windows I've seen from them this year. I mean, we still have the holidays coming up and I'm sure they're gonna outdo themselves, but easily just along Fifth Avenue in general, the thing with Bergdorf Goodman that I think they're so masterful at is the level of detail. There is no stone unturned in any space in their window. It's absolutely amazing. And to collaborate with a film and a director who uh, have you seen that before, suits, Jolene? I don't. I don't think I've ever seen in any of the window displays here in Manhattan a collaboration with a film to this degree for sure. To this degree, absolutely not. We're actually going to take a look at uh, Ralph Lauren Polo in a couple of uh, stores from now who's also collaborating with a film. Um, and we've seen these kinds of collaborations before with TV shows, with films, um, with other you know artistic mediums, but to this degree, absolutely not. I mean, literally, literally incorporated pieces entire, of the set. Yeah. Yes, and taken over the entire frontage of Bergdorf. Yeah, it's phenomenal. They even had the premiere here at uh, the Paris Theater. Uh, the film actually stars Jessica Chastain and Tom Hiddleston, who were on hand to sort of unveil the windows and take photos in front of them. And again, it's haunting, and it's honoring Bergdorf's tradition of couture, one-of-a-kind, beautiful 
uh, clothing. You know, it's not the, the costumes from the film itself. It's an homage told through the story of Valentino and Alexander McQueen and Oscar de la Renta. So it's sort of the pairing of, you know, of film and, and fashion, which are so, it's just stunning to look at. Yeah, no, it's definitely, and um, when, when done to this degree, it's certainly noteworthy and curious to see trends moving forward in terms of collaborations with, I would say, very popular social events, whether it's a movie or some other type of uh, event with major department stores or, or retail. Saks Fifth Avenue is next. Uh, speaking of Halloween, Saks Fifth Avenue is giving us a very sort of spooky, fun, a little more on the nose. Uh, the Crimson Peak Window is obviously a horror film by way of gothic romance ghost story. This is a more little, uh, a little more literal, right? Uh, they're Halloween windows uh, in the guise of sort of um, romantic, and the theme of this window is called Jewels and Ghouls. So I think that sort of explains everything. In the background, we've got um, all manner of creatures that go bump in the night, right? So nocturnal spooks and haunts like werewolves, vampires, bats, black cats, black widows, um, you know, spines and spikes and spiders and all, all manner of spooky things. Um, what I love about the mannequins as well is they're being incorporated. Uh, yes. The mannequins aren't only being used as a vessel to show the garments, which oftentimes they are. They're actually being incorporated into the storytelling with these beautiful sort of masquerade masks around the eyes. The black lipstick, it makes it feel very gothic, very contemporary. It um, just ties in very well. And as you think about just taking a, a plain abstract mannequin and the power of being able to apply makeup, to your point, Jolene, this kind of masquerade uh, black for the eyes and the lips. And then if you can see, it may be tough for our viewers since um, they're seeing this through our, our webinar provider, but even the detail down to the fingertips uh, with, with what appears to be um, black nail polish. So yeah, they're almost very claw-like um, yes. nail extensions that, That's again, right. make it seem almost very... Um, like, uh, you know, sort of predatory and scary in a very fun and romantic kind of Halloween way. And That's even, some Watanabe on the top, a little more punky, a little more edgy. Yes, and again, just uh, using the mannequin to really help convey the theme of the displays and even uh, this hand feels a little bit uh, Halloweenish. Yeah, it's great. The, it's the fun. Color. The lighting is lovely, too. The use of um, black lights and gels that they've put on top of the lighting really gives it nice depth. It makes it feel like it's nighttime, even when you're looking at these windows during the day. And, you know, the use of Alexander McQueen, who has a sort of dark Gothic aesthetic anyway, is very yes. smart. Um, Valentino, Gimashi, you know, they've really sort of pulled out all the stops. All right, so Tiffany and Co. Uh, Tiffany and Company is uh, celebrating its 75th year anniversary at their beautiful flagship location on uh, 727 Fifth Avenue. If you've never seen the building, it's entirely laid in out of marble. It's also a protected landmark here in New York City. It's a really sort of beautiful structure. Um, and Tiffany's very proud New York brand established yes. right here in 1837 by Charles Tiffany. So, you know, it started right here in New York. So they are paying homage to the Big Apple and their windows with these beautiful Art Nouveau inspired windows. That's the Tiffany Victoria collection that you're taking a look at, those beautiful sort of cascading three uh, necklaces. But again, it's sort of big, bright, brassy Broadway, right? No, absolutely. And everything is in sync like you said, with the cascading uh, jewelry pieces in sync with the visual display that is meant to highlight it. So just beautiful work that Tiffany has created here. Ralph Lauren. Um, Ralph Lauren is interesting because we just spoke about uh, film collaborations have, yes. between uh, Bergdorf Goodman and Crimson Peak. Now, Ralph Lauren has done something that I think is uh, actually pretty genius. They've collaborated with the film Pan. Um, I feel like once every five years or so, we have a reinvention of the Peter Pan story. Yes. Uh, whether it's in cartoon format or, you know, or uh, live action. In this case, it's a live action film called Pan. It's starring Hugh Jackman and uh, Rooney Mara and this young man who is Mr. Levi Miller who actually plays 
uh, Peter, Peter Pan, Pan himself. So uh, Ralph Lauren has kind of tapped him as their spokesperson for their children's line, which I think is genius because how often on Fifth Avenue do we get to see kids clothes? But you know, if you figure if the That's adults right. are wearing the designer, they're probably dressing their kids in the same designer, if not something comparable. So uh, why not? I think it's fun, it's youthful, and it's it's really sweet and refreshing to actually see uh, and what you're seeing in their window space is a replica uh, they actually have two beautiful windows they have the replica of Neverland right yes. uh, the magical place where Peter Pan uh, and his lost boys never grow up and then in the other window we have the darlings um, bedroom where Peter kind of sneaks in and takes Wendy and Michael and John on this magical journey to Neverland so two separate universes or two separate worlds, a part of the same sort of universe, being represented here uh, with kids clothes. And what they've done so smartly is instead of putting film uh, costumes from the film, just like uh, they did at Bergdorf, they've incorporated the actual fall children's collection into the guise of uh, the Lost Boys and Tinkerbell and all of these. I people. have to say, I mean, this is brilliant. It's, I mean, this, it's brilliant. It's, it's brilliant, it's right? So smart. It's be because they are benefiting from just uh, revered childhood story that is in theaters now. I just remember seeing the trailer for it uh, on TV not too long ago. And so they are leveraging the strong attraction and power of the Peter Pan story that's out in theaters um, to showcase their latest line. Yeah. I mean, I think it's The actual collection strong. itself is is inspired by the film. It has a lot of nautical elements. There's um, use of pea coats, right? If you look up at a... At a Yes. Levi Miller's photo, he's wearing this beautiful peacoat. There's uh, a sense of sort of adventure and whimsy to it, right, uh, which are all words I would use to associate with Peter Pan. And they actually did for the first time a children's Ralph Lauren runway show, and he was the spokesperson along with um, – Maddie Ziegler, who is the little girl from Dance Moms. She's in all the Sia music videos as well. So they were the children ambassadors. They filmed it. It's on their website if you're curious to see it. It's beautiful. It was done at the Central Park Zoo. Goes to show if you have the right partner, the creative and marketing that you can do with that is just very powerful. Yeah, it's endless. The possibilities. And I think it, it gets people um, thinking because now they're associating your brand in, in a way that maybe they hadn't thought of before. Um, you know, again, hopefully if it's the right brand, it'll help with the association or whichever DNA that is trying to be con conveyed. Uh, Barney's. Barney's is an innovator. I have to say Barney's windows to me are always so thought provoking. Um, sometimes it's as little as just a chuckle that, you know, something that just makes you smile or something that really does make you think. In this case, uh, going back to what we talked about at Macy's with the millennial floor, something millennials love is interaction. There's nothing more um, interactive than Twitter and Facebook and Snapchat and Instagram and this window is completely designed with that in mind. Now October 11th uh, was International Day of the Girl with the hashtag Girl Possible campaign. It took off. Uh, First Lady Michelle Obama sort of spearheaded this movement with the uh, Let Girls Learn initiative. I don't know if you saw this. It was all over social media. Um, I think it's brilliant. I think Young girls need positive role models, uh, disenfranchised children who live in third world countries, especially girls, deserve the right to be educated. And so this is absolutely bringing this to the forefront and to awareness. So while the window space itself looks like a bunch of writing, it actually has an amazing message. And you can tweet. They're interactive. They're uh, installed across all 15 Barney's locations during October, which is a huge collaboration for the visual team, right? Um, Absolutely. Just being able to tap into different stores and different markets and say, okay, what is the message we want to give here to our shoppers, to women, to little girls, you know? And I think, again, that has a power of, of itself. So we're seeing a lot of great examples uh, today of various strategies that some of these premier retailers are taking. In this case, this is Barney's um, lobbying for a specific uh, social idea or commentary, to your point, Jolene. And again, I think they've done it in a compelling way. And from a visual perspective, the window, while it's got a lot of writing in the middle, you've got a bright digital screen. And with the font that they selected and the decals uh, overlaid the way they've done it, it's just, it gets your attention without being, um, the word I'm trying to say, without being just, uh, another 
I don't want to say protest, but it does it in a very attentive way. And again, following it through with the messaging inside the store as well uh, to continue on with the message. Right. The idea of gender equality, I mean, it's such a hot topic right now. It has been for so many years. But, uh, you know, the, the huge wage gap that women are dealing with and young girls sort of being told what they can and can't do. It's so important to sort of raise awareness on gender equality. And I think this does this in a really fun, interactive format. You can actually go into the store, which is what that second photo was. It's called the Girls Lounge. And you can tweet, you can create a video uh, using their screen with your name, your age, your location, and display uh, some sort of uh, message. And a lot of people have been posting this, if you've seen it on Instagram, uh, papers that say anything is possible when, with an ellipsis, and you fill in the blank. Anything is possible when you don't have someone to tell you no, right? Anything is possible when you believe in yourself. So it's a positive message, and it's nice to see Barney is such a big, respected New York brand getting behind something like that. No, absolutely. So... Uh, and again, just a, a quick view of Barney's social commentary, empowering girls. Next, Ellie Tahari. Um, Ellie Tahari has uh, transformed their Fifth Avenue vault store into this really sort of beautiful futurist, uh, futuristic desert landscape. Um, if anybody, any of our viewers got to see the Ellie Tahari runway show this fashion week, uh, even if you didn't, I believe it is. it was streaming on his website, and it might even still be. They usually make these art films out of them. Um, all of the bloggers have them up, too. But uh, take a look at it, because this is an exact set replica of what uh, they showed at Fashion Week. I think it's smart incorporating uh, all the time and energy and money that is spent on creating those sets and that ambiance to then put it in your window space uh, is just a smart sort of... Uh, and we're seeing a lot of that continuation across the, I would say, uh, life cycle of the new lines, to your point, from the runway into the displays. And we're really seeing, in some cases, a lot of cases now, literally elements from the runway shows and getting incorporated into the window displays uh, and or the interior displays. Yeah, absolutely. Why not? If it worked for your runway show and if that was the platform on which you were showing it, you may as well put it in your uh, in your window space. It just makes complete sense. Um, in this case, it's called Futural, uh, Future Natural. To me, it's almost like post-apocalyptic meets. It's like Mad Max meets, hmm. you know, high-end uh, sort of minimal fashion. It's beautiful. It's edgy. Uh, the light design was done by a UK artist named Tom Dixon. They have this these beautiful sort of futuristic globes on the bottom that are supposed yes. to be resembled like futuristic rocks. So it feels like, could it be the surface of Mars? Could it be the Sahara Desert? I don't know, but either way, everyone looks great. They're doing a great job over <laughs> yeah. there. We enjoy, They're wonderful. I love Ellie Tari. We enjoy working with them. All right, we've got Bloomingdale's. Uh, Bloomingdale's has done something really interesting. They actually have, uh, for the first time in a while, they have these uh, sort of interactive to an extent. More so, um, they have revolving windows. So their windows are um, featuring the 100% Bloomies campaign. Now, the 100% Bloomies campaign is so, so smart because it's essentially a campaign that has 100 designers giving Bloomingdale's 1,000 exclusive items for their specific store. Interesting. Right, so basically it's 100% Bloomingdale's, 100% exclusive, a thousand different items that you can mix and match only getting uh, at the Bloomingdale's store, which is really smart. It incentivizes people to shop at Bloomingdale's. Um, and I guess it's all about the uniqueness, right, Jolene? It's all about, well, you can only get it at Bloomingdale's, and instead of just having every available piece from a design collection or so forth, being able to highlight that they do have some items that can be found nowhere else, 100% Bloomingdale's, I think is just really, I mean, that's pretty ingenious as well. Yeah, exclusivity is the name of the game, right? If you have something that nobody else has, if you are basically cornered the market on this one specific good, they're going to come to your store. Especially when you think about department stores, wholesale, where you know, there's a lot of overlap among different uh, department stores and there are a lot of areas or different distribution ways to um, buy product and buy merchandise and so uh, again just finding a way to communicate exclusivity or uniqueness for that brand department store 
pretty smart. Yeah, it's really smart. And so many brands have gotten on board. I mean, over 100 designers. I mean, that's including uh, Burberry, Cavalli, Diane von Furstenberg, Ferragamo. So this is not just, you know, these are the big guys. That they are bought sort of, into this That have idea. absolutely bought into this idea. And what is also really cool is they have collections. They have four, 246 exclusive ready-to-wear looks that you can mix and match with custom bags, fragrances. So they've really thought of everything. It's not just about the clothes. It's about the accessories, it's about the beauty department. It's about completing a com creating a completed head-to-toe look that is exclusive to their store. Excellent. So uh, this wraps up this part of the presentation. And what we will do now, I'm going to switch the screens for our guests so that you can see a presentation that we have. Let's just see. Okay, there we go. And now, so here, um, you we may have covered some of these, but we'll just quickly refresh uh, where we've seen some of these trends, or we'll talk about some new trends um, if we haven't seen these. So uh, Macy's, I think we've talked about, uh, spent some time earlier talking about the millennial floor. And one of the things that we're seeing is incorporation of lighting. All right. In this case, it looks almost like neon lights. These are uh, LED type lights. And whether it's Macy's, whether it's Dior, whether it's Saks, we've seen a lot of these type of uh, lights, literally in this type of configuration in parallel arrangement, perpendicular arrangements, um, be used. And so they're just very versatile, uh, this type of lighting effect. We covered uh, Macy's one below. Again, this is the millennial floor. This actually is Lord and Taylor. Uh, Bergdorf Goodman, again, just recapping the Crimson Peak. And it looks like, Jolene, correct me if I'm wrong, but these might be similar to what we covered in, in the main one. And again, this is Saks Fifth Avenue, a uh, Halloween theme. When would you say that Saks started uh, had their Halloween windows available? Um, I know exactly when it was uh, four days ago. <laughs> okay. uh, because uh, they just did this beautiful collaboration with the Louboutin Beauty Department, which I know our yes. photographer Raul Tovar uh, photographed for them. And uh, those came down. And within, I want to say, maybe 72 hours, these guys were up. So the turnover was very, very quick. Yes, and I will say Christian and Louboutin had their windows up at Saks for a long time, which is somewhat uh, rare for Saks just because their turnover uh, is so high, is so fast. Yeah, they uh, they do work very, very quickly. This is actually a, a piece of the film set, or not the film set, the runway set from the Ralph Lauren Polo Children's um, runway show that took place at Central Park Zoo. So incorporating that actual set into it was a replica version of the film pan and then they put that into their windows excellent so and it looks like we've covered all of this in the initial presentation and so uh, for everybody who's on thank you so much for participating in the October 2015 trends it's been our pleasure and we look forward to seeing you again next month and it's gonna be a fantastic webinar we should have most, if not all, of the holiday window displays uh, to share with you. Have a great month. Feel free to contact us. Our email is contact at windowswear.com. See you next month.